Hi, I'm Matt Rogers, and my project was Cisco Emergency Responder. Some of my project's main goals was first to get the emergency responder to relay the building, buildings and room information for each of the phones. The second was to have an emergency responder periodically update and try to. And third was to create a process for any new switch deployment and to make sure that all the port descriptions are the same throughout. So this is my plan for to get things done. <coughs> so on, on the CER, the emergency responder, I've had to go to each of the switches to get uh, all the phone port information. This uses SNMP, then uses CDP neighbors to find all the port information for the phones, and that updates the CER database. Then you have CTI ports that are running in between here. I've used 5911. 5912, and it's part of these increment at the same time. CER then uses the CTI ports to look for the phone's name inside a call manager, and it updates this database as well. So, when a call is placed to 911, it'll come over here, well, go through the network when a phone first goes through. It'll come through, it'll come over to call manager, call manager will see that it's a 911 call, send it over, the call comes into call manager, call manager sees that it's a 911 call, and the translation pattern that's inside of here, let's do TP, sends it over to CER to find that same translation pattern, and the translation pattern is over here, is what's the ELIN number. The ELIN number has all the building information in it for the addresses and, and divided on floor level as well. That e-link is sent back over here, translation pattern picks it up, goes out through the uh, voice gateway over the PRI and out to CenturyLink, and we'll go straight to the PSAP, Public Safety Answering Point. The other nice thing about Emergency Responder is that it automatically uh, notifies the local or the campus P or whoever you know the security is. This can be done through email, through text, and it dials their extension that's here on campus. Now let me take you through the configurations that I've already gotten done. I'll show you some of those slides. The first steps to take are making sure that everything can talk to each other. Here I've configured the SNMP community string to be able to read the switch's CDP neighbors and to find the ports that the phones are sitting on. Next is to make sure that each switch has that SNMP string with read-only writes and that the ACLs are allowing CER to reach it. Afterwards, I had to configure the IP addresses for each switch inside of CER. This takes care of the switch to CER configuration. However, I need to get the Cisco Unified Communications cluster to talk to CER. I have created a user on, the, on call manager and emergency responder so that this user can pull the database of phone information over to emergency responder. This is seen here in red. This is also where I point the emergency responder to the call manager cluster, which is all in orange. The cluster communicates with CER through the CTI ports as seen here in purple. One important thing to note here in red is that you could see CER is registered and appears as a device inside of Call Manager. This is a look into how the CTI port is configured. It is also important that I use the same partition as shown here in blue for the translation patterns, which I'll show in, later on in this video. If this is done correctly, we should see CER start to populate the information for each switch and pull the port information and the phone inf information. This shows my extension 4366, the switch's IP 
and the port that my phone is plugged into. This is also where it becomes important to have the, a proper naming convention for all the port descriptions. When CER gets uploaded to Entrato, it will strip the unwanted information out, leaving only the room numbers. The next step is to configure the ERLs, or Emergency Response Location, and to divide the buildings in a logical way, so that the ERLs will have their own ELIN, which stands for Emergency Location Identification Number. The ERL ties a switch to a specific ELIN. I have divided the ELINs into one per switch or one per floor with multiple switches. For example, the Holland has two switches per floor, but only one ELIN on that floor. In contrast, the Browning building has one switch but two floors. It only gets one ELIN. The ELIN is the number that will be sent over to call manager. The translation pattern will pick that up and send that number through the CenturyLink PRI straight to the PSAP, which stands for Public Safety Answering Point. Another important note here is that the extension the call is coming from does not get sent to the PSAP. Call manager sees the 911 call and sends the, the translation pattern over. It stores the last 911 call for 30 minutes in case the call gets disconnected. The dispatcher will call the translation pattern back and call manager will remember the extension that it came from and forward the call on. Inside of the ELINs are the alleys. This is the most vital information. Each of the ELINs has, have a different configuration so that the individual buildings and floors will show once the CER database is uploaded to Entrato. This is essentially the information that the 911 dispatchers will see which includes the ELIN. Following the configuration for ELINs, I had to tie them all to the switches. If we look back at this photo, you can see that every switch now has an ERL tied to it, which includes the ELIN and alley information. After the configuration comes the testing. The dispatchers do not like to receive non-emergency calls, but there is a workaround for this. This shows a translation pattern for one of the ELINs. If I configure a phone with an unused extension, I can use that extension in the calling party transform mask. I should see the ELIN show up on the test phone. Let's give some tests a try. We're getting ready to test, so we have to call dispatch to make sure that it's okay to call 911. So that is... George Police Records. Hi, this is Matt with Dixie State University. Hey, Matt. We are going to do some 911 test calls. I just wanted to make sure that was okay. Oh, I'm sure it is. Let me get you into dispatch, though. They're the ones talking. Oh, okay. so just one moment, okay? Thanks. Yeah. Hi, this is Matt with Dixie State University. We want to do some 911 test calls and want to make sure that it's okay. Okay, Jim, yeah, go ahead and start testing. I'll let him know. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So, that 4157 so, goes into 7980. This is the ELIN for the Holland fifth floor. You could see that it's 4157. When I call 911 from this phone, it should transfer over to this phone with the 4157, and it should also notify Clint's phone and his cell phone. So let's give it a try. I'll try doing this through the camera. So 911 over here is ringing on this phone, which it should be. And then let's go look at. Clint's phone. This, okay. So now answer it. Attention, this is an emergency call alert. Caller at extension 4366 is in emergency. See the web interface for more information. Press. 
Okay. So you What is the address of your emergency? Hi, this is Matt with Dixie State University doing a test call. Uh, it's coming up number 435-652-7509. Okay. And it shows HCC, 5th floor, Dixie State University, 225 South, 700 East, room 545. All right, thank you. Okay, bye-bye. I've spent a total of 121 hours trying to get this system to work. I've contacted Cisco directly for help on explaining some of the concepts behind this system. And I've had the support of CCIE Josh Watkins from Cache Valley Electric. This project is something that the school wants and I've been tasked with managing it even after the class ends. I hope you have enjoyed this video and thank you for watching. What you gonna do? What you gonna do?